Uh, well, 15 years ago, now that you've told me, Tim, um, it's gone pretty quickly. Uh, yeah, well, we all were playing at Adelaide City. Adelaide City in the old NSL um, decided not to participate in the NSL anymore. So everyone was sort of left in a bit of uh, in the lurch a little bit. No one knew exactly what was going on. And then within a couple of months, through the, uh, the Federation here in South Australia and uh, a few other people, uh, the club sort of formed overnight. Well, on a personal level, it was um, I got an invite from what was then the South Australian Soccer Federation back in, oh, it would have been August, about this time, 2003, uh, to come down for their inaugural Hall of Fame. And about the same time, Adelaide City had pulled out of the NSL. Uh, and I was talking to Tony Ferrugia, who was the um, CEO of the SASF, as it was. And uh, we talked about the, the dinner, but then we got onto the subject of what was happening with the football. And he said, we're looking to put a United team together. And I asked about the coaching, because I wasn't coaching in Brisbane anymore. And said, look, we'd be interested, and it just all happened from there. So for me, it was a, it was a fairly exciting time. We met with the Adelaide City players in this very room, um, or the ex-Adelaide City players as they were then, about who was going to, to stay on and um, what we wanted to do with them. So we took the bulk of, of Adelaide City's team and plugged in a few locals as well, and, and that was Adelaide United, Mark 1. Fun times. Yeah. Exciting times. Uh, a, new, uh, a new frontier, if you want to use a cliche. Um, especially when Adelaide United kicked off. We weren't too sure how it would evolve and, and what it would become and what, what the club is today. I guess the best thing was it felt like Adelaide was behind, well, I wouldn't say Adelaide, I'd say South Australia was behind us. And, and that you definitely got that feeling as a player. Um, a lot of clubs, we went to, a, did a lot of training sessions at clubs where they would always have a lot of young players that would come and watch and signing autographs and just being involved and and getting out there and promoting the club and that, that was something special to be a part of. I think it was the support that we got as a as a new team from the South Australian public. Everyone seemed to get behind the team and, and push it and especially that first year the the atmosphere that every time we played at home was just electric to have you know almost a sold out stadium every week um, and as I said I was getting towards the end of my career and, and I played a long time at Adelaide City and and yes we used to get good support at Adelaide City but it was nothing like it, it was in the Adelaide United in those first few years it was just um, unbelievable and really enjoyable time to be part of the club. It was really exciting. Yeah, well look, I wasn't coaching. I was actually packing up, not packing up, but in the throes of uh, probably moving to Coffs Harbour. And I was going to drop out for a while. And um, this came up and it was, it was only ever going to be um, short term. Because um, my wife's from Sydney and um, she'd moved around a bit with me. And we had a young family and um, we never really, there wasn't much about what was going to happen at the end of the year. The talk was that uh, the NSL was probably going to fold at the end of that season. Um, no one knew anything for sure. Uh, but we took a chance, which you've got to do sometimes. And I'm happy with, with the outcome of it. It was impossible, I thought, at that stage. I was uh, in quite a few of the meetings uh, in the early part uh, of the of the, the setup, and I just thought it was not, it was definitely uh, impossible. I, from memory, I think it was about five weeks it all happened, so it happened pretty quickly. Um, yeah, and I thought there's no chance. Uh, and we were all players at that stage, and we just wanted to play. And uh, to have that opportunity to, um, to play again uh, was fantastic, and the way it turned out was beyond our wildest, dream, wildest dreams. I think we were slightly isolated from how it all came together. We were just a group of players who would just go and train and prepare for a season very, very uh, quickly, because uh, it, it came about very, very quickly uh, from memory. And so we were, I guess, uh, not involved in, in what was actually happening. And it wasn't until the very first game where we got an understanding of, of actually what was happening. We just didn't know. We just, as a player, you just get on and train. And prepare. They were good footballers, you know, we had experience in Aurelio Vidmar and Carl Viet. Um, you know, two for example, Richie Allegic who played in that first season had played the two previous seasons for me in Brisbane. Um, so I knew what Richie was capable of. 
So we just had to, to work a few other things out. You know, Ross Aloisi wanted to come back from, from Europe. He'd been away a long time. So, you know, I'd seen Ross play before he went to Europe. I knew what he was capable of as a footballer. So with that kind of experience, and you plug in some, some good younger players or some good local players around them, um, and you got yourself a decent football team. Uh, as a captain, you, you do what normal, the normal things that captains do. You, you try to lead the team, try to bring them all together, and, um, and that was part of my role. And, uh, and Cozzy's was uh, to coach the team, and get them fit. And again, we had a short space of time to get ourselves ready for the competition. That was a pretty successful year, considering how we all got together in such a short space of time. Um, yeah, and these guys were so competitive. We all were, um, even at training. Training games were were probably even more vicious than the games itself. Uh, guys who just wanted to win. We weren't really expected to do well that year because you know coming to, together late. Um, you know, Cosy came in late as the coach and didn't really know any of the players. Even though there were quite a few of us had been at Adelaide City, and we hadn't had that much success in, in those previous years at Adelaide City. And he brought in a few new players. So we weren't expected to, to do that well as what we did in that first year and I suppose it started off on the first night, you know, no one expected us to even get a result the first night and, you know, we managed to come away with a 1-0 win and really we could have won by a couple more that night as well. Um, and it's sort of, the support that we got that night sort of galvanised the, the squad and from there the, the team was so strong and together for the whole year, it was fantastic. It was, it was exciting. It was sort of fitting that I coached against my old club, um, but the, the buzz leading up to the game, I think we knew it was sort of going to work. We knew there was a vibe around town about it, but I don't think anyone expected the turn up and the feeling that, that we got on that first night, 17th of October. Um, it was unbelievable. The place was packed. There was no... They, they squeezed an extra two or 3,000 people in. They were sitting in the aisles on the grandstand on the far side. There's no seats. And they turned probably another two or 3,000 away. It was phenomenal. Very surreal. It was probably the first time in the change rooms where they, they came in and they said, we're going to delay a kickoff, the kickoff time. There were so many people outside. Again, leading up to the kickoff and we, we, you turn up here, you prepare, we still didn't know. I mean, you're inside the change rooms, you, you still don't get a feeling that there was a, a curtain raiser before, and even then, you had no real idea. But then when we first walked out and we warmed up on the old, the, you know, the back, back pitch, so we walked past all the bars and all the people were out in the bars, and that, that was, yeah, that, that's when you got a real understanding of, oh, gee, there's a few people here tonight. Match days, you, you, you should be able to sense that it's match day. You know, you, you drive down, uh, down Man Manton Street or, or Holden Street, and uh, there's people spilling out everywhere, and you, you can sort of smell the cut fresh grass from outside, and, um, and you can sense there was something special happening that day. And, and I don't know if you remember, but walking out here on that very first night against Brisbane Strikers, that showed you what. Uh, what everyone really wanted. You know, from memory, I think Richie Aligic crossed the ball in and I you know, just managed to get across the front defender and slid in and got it in. So um, yeah, it was, I was I'm, I've seen the photo. I actually have never seen the game or the goal um, video. I've only seen sort of photos of it. And you can see the photo of there of uh, me, Ross and, and Aurelio, how happy we were from, from that goal. No, we just got on with the job and we had a fairly good season. We ended up third in the league. We got knocked out in the prelim final by Perth, who went on to, to win the competition that year. Um, and they smacked us. We were gone. You know, in Perth, it was... It's funny how it happened a couple of years later with Adelaide United in the grand final with Melbourne Victory as well. But I think our grand finals have been getting there. You know, we played South Melbourne. It went to extra time, and Richie Alligett scored a penalty to, to win the game. Um, but that even that night was was pretty special. Yeah, it was one of one of the highlights of my football career just to be involved in something that I, I honestly didn't think I would see happening in, in my playing career. Yeah. Uh, football's always got a massive untapped potential, yeah. uh, but I, I certainly didn't see that happening in, in my playing career and, and certainly here in, yeah. in Adelaide. And Adelaide's a very strong footy town, Aussie rules town. Um, and even the Aussie rules people were 
sort of jumping on the bandwagon. You know, we'd struck up a, a good relationship with Port Power. Uh, Mark Williams was the coach then. And I grew up in Port Adelaide. So I was never a Port supporter, but when I came back, I was. Um, and so we did stuff together. We went out to the local communities, to different clubs and had conducted training sessions there for the kids to come down and have barbecues after them and meet the, we're pressing the flesh, so to speak, and it worked. For me, it was fantastic, you know, being a South Australian um, born player. And you know, at that time we had virtually all, the whole team was South Australian. And to get that support was just fantastic. You know, as I say, I was coming towards the end of my career and never really had that when we, we played it at home. So um, yeah, it was fantastic. The thing is that people had faith in each other and all the cards were on the table. We had to get a job done. We had to get it done quick and everybody was pulling in, in one direction. And that's why it was, I think that's why it was successful. Um, and also because it, it galvanised the football community, not just pockets of it, not just the Greeks or the Italians or the Poles or the Serbs or the Croats or, or anyone else. It brought the whole football community together. Oh, look, I think they just wanted a, a very strong brand for, for football in this state. Um, and I know the competition has, has, has changed a lot. Um, and look, you can't forget our roots as well, you know, because all the uh, NSL clubs, you know, they played a massive part in, uh, in what the competition is today. The reality is, I, I believe, is it's still a, it's almost like a, a state team, if you, if you can call it that. So you're playing for South Australia and to have a lot of young players and to give young players in Adelaide opportunities because there is a lot of good young footballers that are craving for an opportunity to play at a high level. And just to get given the experience and just to show what they are capable of and it is and that's probably the other emphasis I've noticed is um, you know can we get young local players playing for this club because that, that then they have that I believe if they're growing because a lot of them may have would have grown up supporting the club being in the terraces at six seven eight years of age so there's that you know also that that love for the club or that desire and that that's what sometimes you need that extra one percent two percent whatever it may be but if you've got players that are the desperate and that and that's probably their dream some of them now is to play for Adelaide United they need opportunities and that's the big thing you know young players they need opportunities and they need to be supported and given time they have to you know put the time in it's no point just giving them, them an opportunity because they're young and they're from South Australia. They have to work and they have to be good enough. And I believe that we have got a good group of young players at the club and there's um, looking what's coming underneath. There's a lot of good young players coming through as well, but they need opportunities. Um, they need some, the right guidance, I suppose, as well, to, to be challenged to, to get to that next level. The club had a really strong connection with the local football community. There's something that you need in a city like Adelaide. And for a club like Adelaide, you need to have your local community on side, your football community.